What did the physics professor have for lunch? Fish and chips. <laughs> oh, God. So we're going to be talking about this uh, nuclear power plants. The idea here is to use nuclear power to generate electricity. Now, what really happens, this, uh, we really, in order to generate power, we want to turn a turbine. You know, so that's basically just a wheel with magnets attached to it. And it turns out moving magnets make electricity. If you're in higher level, you go into great detail with this called Faraday's law and Lenz's law. If you're standard level, you don't really have to know this, but I think it's important just to show you how turning a wheel with magnets on it gives you electricity. So if I look at this PHET animation here, and I just look at this right here, well, do you notice then I've got this uh, magnet right here that's moving around? Well, it turns out these field lines around the magnet if they're running into a coil of wire, notice if I don't move the magnet, nothing exciting happens. A voltmeter says nothing. But as I move the magnet, do you notice that as I move the magnet, I end up with electricity in some form. I have an induced EMF, it's called. Now, on higher level, you learn why it is one way and the other. You learn about Faraday's and Lenz's law. But I just want to teach you that <clears throat> if you had a wheel that had these magnets attached to it and, these mag and the wheel was spinning, do you notice then you'd just be moving the magnet? Do you notice you get electricity? That's what we're trying to do. So even with a nuclear power plant, although it sounds really complicated, it's just about turning a wheel, which is kind of crazy, isn't it? I mean, you know, like a wind turbine, like in Denmark, for example, where uh, my wife is from, uh, there's lots of these wind turbines, depending on where you live, maybe they have those. The idea is, of course, the wind hits the blade of the propeller, uh, this turbine, it basically bounces off, it imparts an impulse and makes it turn. Why does it turn? We attach magnets to that and moving magnets give you electricity. So it's all about turning a wheel with magnets. So what do we really do here with this? Well, we start with uranium-235 enriched. And we learned that before, that uh, that's because what you dig out of the ground is actually uranium-238. has a very small proportion of 235, so it's very complicated. But you can basically siphon out more and more of the uranium-235 from the 238. So basically you make this into pellets. You make this into fuel rods. Imagine like little, little rods of this. So imagine like this here. There you go, and that's your uranium here. Okay, so there's different pellets here like this. And there you go. Now what do you do? Of course, you fire neutrons at it. So that means you take a neutron here, and you just fire it at it. And what will that happen? Uh, well, what will that do? That'll induce fission, because a neutron hitting a uranium-235 makes it unstable. It makes uranium-236, and then it becomes other products plus more neutrons and energy. Of course, we're going to use this energy as the heat source in order to do stuff to turn a magnet. I'll explain that, or turn a wheel. We have something called a moderator. Do you want this around the fuel rods? Because you want to slow down the neutrons. The neutrons that are made in the chain reaction, they go really fast. And if you want them to run into other things to make more reactions, you need to slow them down. So a moderator is just a material you use to slow down the neutrons. That's the key thing with a moderator here, okay? Moderators to slow down the neutrons. Why? Because, uh, well, you're more likely to have a chain reaction. What are they made of? Well, it's usually graphite, like carbon, for example. Okay, let's do a quick diagram. I'm a very bad artist, as you can tell, but let's just go over the features of it. So first things first. You have these, so these are your fuel rods, like we just talked about. Those fuel rods I just drew uh, before here, like this right here. This is my little fuel rod here. That's what I'm talking about here. So that's these fuel rods here that have got lots of uranium-235 in them. And around them, we put this moderator, the graphite that I just talked about before. So now we've got fuel rods and moderators. Here's the problem, though. If you do this reaction, if it's happening too much, there's a danger that it gets too hot. You know, too many reactions happen. You get too much energy, and literally the whole thing could just melt. It's called a meltdown. You don't want this, right? Because the, this thing gets so hot, it'll actually just melt through whatever its casing is. This is what happened in Chernobyl, for example, in Russia uh, a long time ago in the 80s. Well, um, what's now Ukraine. Uh, but this right here happened there where basically it got too hot. And so there was a meltdown. There was an explosion of the gas inside. Lots of this nasty stuff got out. It was not good. So what you have to do with a nuclear reactor, you have to take good care of it. And we have these things called control rods. Those can be raised or lowered. So imagine if they're raised, then you allow lots of these neutrons to go back and forth and have the reaction happen. So if these control rods are lowered, they're going to slow the reaction because they're going to stop you know, neutrons. They're going to absorb them. So in other words, they're not going to reach somewhere else. And if you raise them, of course, then you increase the reaction. 
and it's not perfectly fast. In other words, if you lower them, it's not like it stops the reaction right away. It's a very slow process. So these control rods are really important to be very, very uh, reliable going up and down. Now, of course, when you do all this, a lot of heat is generated. So you've got some gas that's sort of flowing around, and there's a whole bunch of different kinds of designs. We don't need to go into all those details, but the general idea is somehow you take that heat and you circulate it. So in this case, maybe like this right here. And what you do, you have this thing called a heat exchanger. We'll talk about that in a second. But basically, you take some cold water from a reservoir, you run it you know, through this area here, through this you know, hot area, and this heat you're going to heat the water and make it into steam. That steam then will be used to turn a turbine, you know, turn a wheel with magnets on it and give you electricity. That's the idea behind it. So it's just a really fancy way of just heating water. It's just extremely effective. It's very, very uh, energy dense, we say. So, you know, just like one kilo of uh, uranium, for example, gives you, you know, thousands and thousands and thousands of times more energy than, you know, a kilo of coal, for example, or whatever you're using. So that's why we use nuclear uh, power, because it's just a really efficient way to heat up water. But again, the idea is just to turn a wheel with magnets on it. So let's talk about the details here. This heat exchanger, this thing right here, this area right here, what is that? Well, that's hot gas around the reactor goes to the heat exchanger. It's used to give thermal energy to the water. Basically, that steam is used to turn the turbine. Now, what I didn't draw here, this entire thing is covered. You know, this whole thing is shielded. We have shielding. This is because we want to protect the people. We want to protect the system from a meltdown. Basically, they use, you know, really strong structures like steel, but also really, really thick concrete. Because also there's lots of radioactive products that come from this. There's neutrons, there's gamma rays, there's lots of stuff. It gets really, really hot. So you want to, you know, shield everything. All right, so what else do we need to know about? We need to know about nuclear waste. Like when you do these reactions that we've been talking about before, all these reactions that happen in other videos that I showed you, what goes on here with you know, uranium-235 turns into uranium-236, makes some other byproducts, gives you neutrons, which makes a chain reaction. It also gives you heat, which is what you're using actually to give you electrical power here. But you end up with lots of really nasty, you know, waste here. So fission reactions, for example, they, they give you lots of things with really long half-lives. Remember, that's the time it takes for the amount of material to go down to half. There's sometimes millions of years. So things like, for example, uranium-236, for example. Uh, you've got, for example, um, plutonium-239. There's lots of things. Okay, so lots of these, you know, products, for example, are highly radioactive. Uh, they're very active, which means there's lots and lots of stuff coming out of them. So that's really bad. So you have to be very careful with these. So you need to be really careful with them. And here's what we normally do. Now, usually you put them into thick steel and lead drums. The lead is to absorb these neutrons and gamma, you know, for example, that come from these things, uh, or even alpha particles. Um, sometimes we bury them underwater, which is really stupid because if you're putting them in a metal container, you put them in salt water, that's going to corrode it. So that's really stupid. Uh, sometimes people bury them underground. They put them in these big areas and try to have like big warnings, like don't dig this up, don't open it. You know, they're thinking maybe, you know, in a thousand years from now, whoever's here, you know, digs this up. They don't want them to accidentally dig up something like this. So you need to be really careful with these. So these, uh, these nuclear power plants, they're really good at giving us energy, so they're very efficient, but we need to be very careful with these byproducts, these waste products. So some people are really against these ideas because if there is an accident, it could be really bad, like we saw in the Chernobyl, for example, in the 1980s. But you do get a lot of energy out of them. So different countries make these different decisions based on what they're okay with. Now, if we could actually get uh, nuclear fusion reactors to work, that would be much better. The problem is they're not very efficient yet. Uh, basically, you need more energy put in than you get out of them, so they're not very effect effective yet. But the reason why fusion reactors would be really good is because the byproduct of that from hydrogen, you're just fusing it into helium. Helium is actually something we need. It's something we actually don't have enough of. So that's why the byproducts would be really good. But there's other reasons why too. But I hope they can figure out fusion reactions, but it turns out it's really, really complicated to control them. But hey, there we go. So this is uh, what we've talked about for nuclear power plants, how we generate electricity, and a few of the main design characteristics.